Okay, we have here another interesting looking integral. We've got the integral from minus one to one of one over x squared dx. Now, at first this seems really simple and there's not too much going on. What I can do is, can I first just rewrite this in the numerator as x to the minus two dx? So then we'll just go ahead and integrate and we end up with minus one over x and we just need to evaluate this from minus one to one. So we plug in here and we're gonna get, for the first term plugging in one, we have a minus one. Then for the second term, we plug in, let's do this kind of carefully. So we have a minus one over minus one. The negative signs cancel. So we just have minus one, minus one, minus two. But then after you do this and you get minus two, what you might do is you might just take a look at a graph. And when you do that, you'll notice we have a vertical asymptote around zero. And just kind of eyeballing, I know this is a rough graph, but we're looking for the area in here between one and minus one. Anyway, just looking at it, there's all kinds of problems. Like there's just no way it can be minus two and it looks like a much greater area than even positive two. Well, it turns out the problem here is at zero, you'll notice we're dividing by zero if you plug a zero in there. And so this curve is actually not continuous on this interval from minus one to one. So we can't just go ahead and do the integral the straightforward way. So what I want to do instead, noticing that we've got a problem point at zero, is I can actually break this up and I can write this integral as going from minus one to zero, and then we can go from zero to one. Now we still need to be a little careful with this idea of adding these two things together, because in order to add these, we need both of these integrals separately to converge. If either one of these diverges, our whole integral diverges. So we can check these integrals. I can just start with either one. So let's start here. And if we integrate this one, well, it's still gonna be the same integral, minus one over x. And we just need to evaluate this from minus one to zero. But now we're gonna to need to be a little careful because we know there's a problem at zero. Because this whole interval is on the minus side, we can write this as zero minus because we're gonna to need to find a limit. So what we want here for this first part, we're gonna want the limit as x approaches zero minus from the left side of minus one over x. And then we'll have this other piece, we're gonna have minus, well, minus one over, we're plugging in minus one here. So this piece is just gonna be one. But now evaluating this part, what's gonna happen if we have minus one and then we're looking at zero minus here. So we're looking at like a really small negative number here. So essentially what's happening is we end up with an infinity minus one case or just infinity. So we can say that this here actually diverges. And as it turns out, we don't even need to check this other one because if one of the integrals diverges, we can say the whole integral diverges. Now, even though I don't need to, I'm still gonna check this second one just to see what's happening. So we'll check this, even though it's not gonna affect our answer. So integrating again, we're gonna have minus one over x, just evaluated from zero to one. We'll plug in our one, so the first part's just gonna be minus one, minus, and then again, we're gonna have this limit, but this time we're evaluating this at zero plus. So we're looking at the limit from the right side of zero, minus one over x. This is gonna be minus one, minus, then evaluating this limit, it's gonna be like minus one over zero plus, this is gonna be minus infinity, but we have a minus in front of it. So again, it's the same thing. It's gonna be this infinity minus one. So again, we say this integral here from zero to one diverges. And so in this case, we could have started with either one and we come to the same conclusion that this integral diverges, so no solution. So one other interesting thing to think about for this problem is what would happen if we had a different exponent on the x? What if this was one over x cubed, let's say? Or what if this was just one over x? So in that case, would we have the same exact problem or would we have a different problem or would it just be a normal integral that we could integrate to a number? So we'll stop it there. Thanks everyone for watching today. Have a great day.